Hi, I'm, I'm going to give you a detailed look at the Active Pulse math page. So when I log in as a teacher, I come up to the main menu here, Scores and Reports. I'm going to come up here and select Active Pulse Math. All right, now I'm going to scroll down and take a look at the data here. So initially, when we look at this page, we see our summary scores, and this is just our sum of the data. So in our class, we see a total score, strand score, measurement. These are all uh, very high-level scores. Um, that are more used for accountability and quickly seeing how are my students doing. Now this is a sixth grade class, but we see that this class has very diverse scores. We have a student with a high fourth grade, low fifth grade, high second grade score. These are total scores. We see the individual strand scores as well. They really vary. Okay? Now if I wanted to look at an individual report for a student, I can click over reports. I can see a summary report, a detailed report, progress standards, a special ed report, which I could use for writing IEPs. Um, but more specifically now, let's say I'm a teacher, I want to dive into this data and actually get into some granular data. So I'm going to click on Numbers and Operations. And specifically, I want to look at these individual subtests. So in Numbers and Operations, there's 14 different areas. And I can go ahead and see these scores. These are grade level scores. In place value, a green score means the student has maxed out in that subtest. So this student has a maximum score, which is 5.9. The student here, Claudette, is at a 4.9. The student, Danny, is a little lower, a 2.9. If I wanted to, I could sort from low to high, high to low. Now, if I click on the magnifying glass, I can actually um, look at my class in the scope and sequence of that particular subtest. I could also click up over here, and I could select the uh, subtest as well. So let's click on that. Now, here I am looking at place value. What we're seeing is the scope and sequence of how you teach place value. These students here have mastered place value, right? By sixth grade, you're supposed to have mastered place value. Uh, this is the first skill you teach, uh, two-digit place value and one-digit, three-digit place value. Uh, these two students are working on thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. And these students all up here are working on decimal place value, right? So now, this is what's powerful about Adam. After my entire school or class takes a full Adam assessment, we are ready to break up into small groups on a daily basis, right? So any day I'm trying to teach something, I find the subtest, I drill down, I see exactly where all my students are. If I know I want to do a review lesson on decimal place value, maybe it's the beginning of the year. So for these students, I might want to give them an assignment on some of the basics of place value. And I can go ahead and just check those three boxes, click homework, and now I can give them an assignment, uh, Friday review. So maybe I have a Friday review day. I can give it a due date, give them some other instructions. Um, I can also, I could also select the curriculum. Do I want to use free Khan Academy? Do I want to use Math Edge, which is our instruction, or do I want to do a custom URL? Once I select those, I can go ahead and just do a search. So if I do Math Edge, place value, I'm going to do place value basics. I can actually preview the lesson as well if I wanted to. And then we see here are those three students that I wanted to select. I select save, and now we're ready to go. Okay, so let's go back to that page. Now coming back over here, um, I see, again, I'm seeing my class. I could choose another subtest if I want. Let's say I want to take a look at individual student for a specific student. So let's choose uh, Danny. So if I take a look at Danny's progress report, we're now looking at this report and we see exactly how Danny's doing across all these different areas of mathematics. So this is his detailed progress report. So we see our total scores, our strand scores. The double arrow is a skill that he needs to be working on next. So within place value, Danny needs to work on identifying thousands, ten thousands, a hundred thousands. This is where he's working on next. Within these other areas, he's mastered this. Within subtraction, he needs to work on subtraction with regrouping. Again, we see exactly where he needs to work. Now, if I see a red double arrow, that means that's where he's working on, and this is he's below grade level. Okay? So in terms of multiplication, he needs to work on two and three digit by two digit numbers, and then he needs to work on multiplication, identifying community associated distributive properties. So these are the two skills he works on next. Now the IEP report, which I haven't showed you, allows us to data mine this report. This report, I think, is like 12 pages long, right? Because math is very broad by the sixth grade. It goes on and on and on. So at one level, you could print this out. It guides you exactly what you need to do. And we have a separate video that shows you this, the IEP report, but I just will show you where it's at. I would go over here to IEP, 
our special ed. And from here, I could start data mining these areas. Now coming back to my page, my main page here, we see these are all the instructional points. These are actually represent the zone of proximal development for these students. Let's take a look at some of these other areas. Let's look at measurement. Within measurement, we see again, these different scores, right? Now what this represents is these, this data is then used in EDGE, which is our online instruction. So we use these points to create a custom course for every student in Math EDGE. We also use these points to place students into a Khan Academy, which is free online video lessons within different areas. So you have lots of different options, whether the student, the teacher wants to do custom assignments with, with this data, whether they want to um, use automatic lessons, or whether they want to use this just for grouping so that they can do small group or whole class instruction. Um, there's really a lot of choices. And remember, all of these data points, so let's take a look at temperature here. We know that these, these students here need to work in, on we know that these students need to work on understanding a thermometer. These students need to work on reading a thermometer. This isn't just one question. This student was tested on a set of items and they got it, uh, you know, either mastery or non-mastered. These students, again, were given a set of items saying, can they correctly read a thermometer? And they had a non-mastery. So I am very confident for these students need to work on it, right? And again, these students down here have mastered this because they have demonstrated mastery, not through one question, but through a set. That's how the entire Let's Go Learn system works, is that we really are trying to give you detailed and accurate information at the skill and concept level, as opposed to just driving a score for accountability. All right, thank you very much, and please watch some of the other videos to find out more about our system.